let me ask you first off uh, why you think um, this is a bad offer from Fortum. You've met with the CEO, as we understand it, in Dusseldorf. Do you think the two of you could work together? I think first, and uh, I think you said it already, both the supervisory board as well as the management boards recommend not to accept the Fortum offer. For three, sort of like the reasons, I mean, the offer price is simply not attractive. There's a limited strategic benefit for us as Uniper, and there's still unclear intentions in terms of uh, what uh, Fortum really wants to do. Uh, and I think these are three convincing reasons why we said uh, we would not recommend to our shareholders to accept that. I did indeed meet the uh, CEO, sort of like, which is quite normal. Um, obviously, in, in those circumstances, and I said I would do once the offer is on the table. We had a constructive meeting, and we'll simply have to see how we take it from here. But I think the message to the outstanding shareholders uh, and our free, uh, shareholders on the market is quite clear. Could you imagine, uh, even if there weren't an outright takeover, could you imagine the two of you working together in some other way? Are there areas of the business in which you could cooperate and create synergies without an absolute merger? I think one thing is obviously clear, and that's a bit of an unusual uh, takeover situation, given that our former parent has already pledged to uh, uh, sort of like uh, deliver their shares into the offering in the new year. And therefore, 47 percent of the shares will most likely obviously end up with Fortum. And therefore, in that situation, we'll most likely see a change in our largest shareholder. And therefore, it's quite clear that obviously we need to see uh, in what form we can work together in what form we can possibly cooperate. There are some limited overlaps in the business in terms of hydro and nuclear in Sweden and uh, our Russian business. And therefore, let's just see what uh, we can come up with. Uh, Schaefer, good morning. It's Guy Johnson in London. Would you prefer a different buyer? Would a different name make a difference? I think what we always said, and uh, if you look at the story of Unipa over the last year, I think we uh, were close on the stock market a good year ago. Uh, at 10 euros, right now we're trading at 23.80. So I think that's quite a strong story on the stock exchange, and I think our clear preference, and actually what was also outlined in the past, our largest share of the E.ON, was to float the company further on the market and therefore increase the free float. I think that clearly would have been our preference. But again, sometimes you cannot uh, uh, sort of like choose what's happening. Sometimes you have to take uh, what there is. And I think, therefore, we just need to work now from that basis. Would you prefer a German government that doesn't include the Greens? Honestly, after the last weekend, uh, I think in a capital-intensive business like ours, I think predictability and stability are probably the two most important elements. And therefore, what I would have wished for is a stable and predictable government. Uh, it's less a question of, uh, of color games here, who is in, who is out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just uh, hope that uh, in Germany we come back to stability uh, and find a government which then will uh, sort of like define and uh, look at an energy policy for the future. Um, and again, sort of uh, the discussions on the energy policy so far is simply limited on the question of how much coal by when. I think it's uh, far too, too uh, small sort of like an issue. I think there are broader topics, uh, security supply, uh, and how to sort of like make an energy market really work in Germany. And I think uh, if the new government, a new government would focus on that, we'd clearly appreciate it. Well, I mean, a timeline of how much, uh, how many coal-fired plants to get rid of and by when is one of the things they're almost definitely going to want to negotiate, whether or not they uh, try again with this coalition or go forward with the grand coalition. If, it's, if there are new elections, they're going to talk about that as well, obviously, Klaus. What timeline do you think is right for, uh, for Germany? What timeline do you think is right for Uniper? quite clear, and therefore I sometimes find uh, a bit of over dramatizing the situation here. A coal X as such is already clear that it will happen because I cannot see anyone else now starting a process of building new coal-fired plants, neither in Germany nor in most countries uh, of the EU, actually. And therefore, it's just a question of how long you need the existing plants for. And I think this is less sort of like an issue of saying, is it 5 gigawatts, is it 10 gigawatts? But when I think one should carefully look at the market, one should carefully see what uh, will happen. I think we'll have the full nuclear exit in 22. That will put a strain on the market. I think we have the increase of the renewables, which is by itself a positive. 
but clearly also that requires backup capacities. And therefore, I find it just too simple to only look at the, the coal topic. And again, I'm saying that looking at the, the energy policy of Germany, you know that we have quite a balanced portfolio of gas and coal and hydro. Uh, and therefore, it's sort of like uh, clearly whatever sort of like happens, we'll have parts of the business uh, that uh, may sort of like have more difficulties and others that would benefit from that. But I still believe in the interest of a strong and reliable uh, German energy market. I think one should not jump to, uh, to two quick conclusions on that topic. Klaus, you mentioned a moment ago your concerns surrounding the issue of stability. The German economy and the data that are coming from it right now appear to be very strong. Do you think political instability could ultimately have an impact on the German economy and ultimately, therefore, the demand for power that you see? I mean, first, sort of like that instability that uh, you're talking about is only lasting for four weeks now. So I think let's uh, rather look into the future. I think there's ample time to, to, uh, to come back to uh, stability there. I think the German economy has shown uh, an incredible strength also in difficult times. And therefore, I'm not worried that this will change uh, uh, short term here. I was more referring to the energy industry because, again, there you take very long lasting uh, decisions. Uh, and therefore, I think predictability and stability have a value in that uh, part of the uh, economy. Uh, but uh, again, I'm quite sure that the German economy can uh, also survive a couple of more weeks or months without a firm and uh, final government.